Art Gallery and the Whitney Museum of American Art. He earned his BA at Morehouse College, his MFA with a specialization in printmaking from Howard University. And at Yale, he received his MA in African American Studies and an MPhil and a PhD in the history of art. Um, thank you so much. Uh, again, if you're not muted, I'm going to ask you please mute yourselves for the duration of the conversation. If you have any questions for um, Lyle or Dr. Powell, please write them in the chat and at the end of our conversation, uh, we'll pose those questions to our speakers. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Lyle and Dr. Powell. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. So Lyle, uh, we were just reminiscing uh, earlier and I was not, uh, actually yeah <laughs> you know I, i've been realizing that you've been kind of um in the art world for a little while well no i was thinking that um you know because we were saying we met um in 97 as we were saying at the corcoran but um actually when i in thinking about first i would like to thank you know david um castillo for inviting me you know um david to a close friend, and I've been, I'm showing with David for a number of years, and I want to thank Claudia, the director of the gallery, and Christine, um, assistant, um, for um, hosting us tonight. And also to thank you, Rick, you know, because, you know, I've, we've known you for many decades now. In fact, you were, um, it was your, I think, um, it wasn't the first, but it definitely was um, the most deeply impactful having that early affirmation of, um, of me and my work by you, by opening up a chapter of your, from a chapter on me, um, um, addressing my Good Life show from 94 in your um, 1997 Thames and Hudson um, seminal Black Art and Culture book, which is, I think is in its several, what edition is it in now? We're getting ready to launch the third edition okay. uh, in 2021. Yeah, and then we also worked together um, when you, I was in your Cutting a Figure um, book, um, um, which included a work of mine in that, so that you're also are living with, which I'm so happy <laughs> to know. So, um, yeah, so in thinking, so I mean, I wanted to throw, throw it over to you, throw it back to you, so we wanted to say that, so. Thank you, uh, and, and thank you for your graciousness uh, in uh, thanking our hosts and, and just, you know, reminding us that, that uh, um, we've had a long interaction over the years. Um, I'm also remembering uh, going to see Black Male at the, um, at the Whitney Museum. And the day that I was there, um, I, I happened to be there at the same day that uh, Isaac Julian was there oh, and, wow. um, and, and, um, and Essex Hemphill. And, were, they, were they together um, seeing a show? I think it was all serendipity. We all happened to be there I on the same day. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, did, and, did the three of you chat with each other? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've known, I knew Essex in DC and, um, and I guess I was getting that, to know that, Isaac. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that you knew Essex. Oh yeah, when I was at the Washington Project for the Arts in Washington DC, I organized a big project at the beginning of 1989 called From the Potomac to the Anacostia. Mm. And I had Essex and um, Wayson uh, do a wonderful performance piece. And I'll never forget that, that moment. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, what year was that again? Uh, the beginning of 1989. 89, wow. Okay, because Essex and I met, met around, I think in 89, actually. I met um, um, at CalArts. I, um, in a period of one semester, I did a one-week workshop with Bell, Bell Hooks, and then... Um, John, John O'Connor and Reese came, I think, a few weeks after that. Isaac, a couple weeks after that. And then Marlon and Essex. So I would say they definitely uh, um, were huge influence on, you know, the, the impactful the rest of my time, you know, at, um, at Kellogg. So this brings up something that I've been thinking about, and it is your internationalism. I mean, you have, you have lived around the world. And I think that's really reflected, not just in these shadows, but, but in all of your work, um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, your travels and, and the places that you've lived and how impactful they've been to the work that you create? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of a, um, yeah, I can, I can speak, a little, little, little speak a little bit to that, but I, I think it would be um, good to also mention, because um, I, I chimed in the other day when um, Sarah Lewis was hosting Isaac and Angela Davis uh, on, uh, on the occasion of, um, 
um, Isaac's um, magisterial um, project on Frederick Douglass, and she was talking about the need to talk about, talk about Frederick Douglass internationalism and how often we forget about that and often as Americans and as African Americans, we don't actually um, talk about our relationship to not only to the diaspora, in terms of the African diaspora, but the larger world itself. But I was very fortunate as a child, um, and it cannot be overstated, um, after my parents' divorce in the early 70s, um, that my mother um, was a chemistry professor, was following on the heels of several you know, Americans, African Americans, post-civil rights, who went to Africa to be of service, if you will. I mean, clearly she wasn't the first generation. If you think about Du Bois, you know, being invited by Nkrumah, of which is right, being invited by Nkrumah in 57, and, and that's just to name a few. Um, so I would say um, that experience, as you can imagine, as a young African, a young American, a young African American, you know, from the Bronx to be living in a, uh, um, to be um, living for two years, residing for two years, in a, um, a African country, a black African country with a black, you know, um, brilliant, you know, visionary, let's say, um, you know, head of state. And what it meant for me to um, not only, um, I mean, we had the option of, my mother was working for the Ministry of Education. So she was making a professional, professional salary, but as you can imagine, it was, uh, what she's making here as a professor. So my brother, she gave, she gave my brother and I the option of either going to a, um, a, uh, a boarding school, international school for primarily foreigners and sons and daughters of diplomats, or to go to a, um, a Tanzania English speaking school, which we opted for and took great vacation. So, I mean, since its inception, then that's been obviously um, foundational to my, my sense of the world, if you will. Um, particularly upon returning to the Bronx, and my mother married her, um, my um, um, Puleli Nine, who, um, who she had met prior to us leaving for Tanzania, and he was um, South African, um, an exile revolutionary who had left after the burning of the passes and then bleeding 59 and traveled, um, as my brother brilliantly illustrated in his film, on the 12 disciples of Nelson Mandela travel by foot um, if you will, from Bloemfontein, the height of apartheid, in the center of apartheid, by foot um, to um, outside of Dar es Salaam, which was the, um, and to join the armed wing of the, the ANC. So um, when we returned from living in Tanzania, where I learned how to swim in the, in, the, in the Indian Ocean, we, at any given time, at our house in the Bronx, which several people were called tonight, had been everyone from, you know, President Mbeke to, um, Hugh Masekela's sister, Barbara Masekela. So it was a site where the African national, let's say, um, exile community from students to political leaders, et cetera, um, would be, um, would be um, visited, you know. So as children, I might have resented it waking up, you know, to like, you know, many, many people in the house, but I'm so deeply, you know, honored and um, grateful to have had that experience, you know. In fact, we're remarking before people get on the call that this um, Thanksgiving that's coming up in a couple of days with only be a part of five of us, it's going to be, I mean, like for all of us, it's going to be strange because there's always, you know, an abundance, if you will, of not just the family, but the extended family. And um, so, yeah. And then again, I um, after my, should I continue about my internationalism or no? Is that well, let's, we can look at some artworks and talk at the same time. Yeah. Okay, great. So I thought, um, so, um, so let, 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 let's, let's move into that. So I thought it would be interesting to talk a little, um, at least start here, not linger, but because I think um, the Warden Hall in a way anticipated um, Warden Hall from 96 and I think the initial reception, which was considered, the work was considered incendiary at the time, and when the work um, took many years, you know, to find its proper home at the MoMA with the deep general support of Aggie Gunn. But I think once that work was had, in a way, being a chaperone, if you will, of the work, that once that work found its proper home, I think, let's move to the next slide, please. I think I began to, um, think about um, returning to the scene of the crime, if you will, to thinking about um, the archive in a different type of way. And there was some unfinished business about this form of, let's say, um, 
process of rephotographing. I mean, clearly portraiture has been a staple of my work for um, a couple of decades, but also there has always been a collage, you know, impulse, if you will, working with disparate, disparate images. And this work, the Warden Hall from 96, um, it was considered to be a very, very tough work, if you will. And so once that work got um, um, found its proper home, as I said before, I began to think about at the prompt of um, um, David, David Castillo to, um, for the, I think it was Miami Balls of 2017, to think about a new work. And this is right on the heels of the Whitney Biniel 2017, to think about a work. I should say that um, um, there, um, you know, the, the lovely Pamela Joyner had the book, you know, an abstraction that came out, which um, my, my dear friend Greg Miller who published, you know, published that book. And I was thinking about um, how has abstraction figured in my own process, et cetera, in terms of like applying a certain pressure if you will to content happening and seeped up. So I think, let's go forward, please. So um, before I get to the shadows, I, I, I included this slide because I thought um, the image on the left, you would have quiet about that in terms of like, say, um, thinking about another form of, let's say, collage and or, the process of assembling images, if you will, and um, that is exemplified, let's say, in, in the work on the, on the piece, Untitled Dad. And um, this piece was um, done on the occasion of my, my father um, passing away um, in 2018. It was for participant. Um, and um, Nancy Spector saw it there, and she, um, and um, um, plus um, the curators of the Implicit Intention included in the show at the, the, Mo at the, the Guggenheim. But I, it's curious to me in relationship to how the dad, for example, the warning hole on the, on the right from 96, and I should just say, I'll digress a bit, that the D that is on the, on the piece on the left and the silk, when I was thinking about this project on my father, I was trying to source that letter, if you will, and I could not find it. So the letter itself had to be sampled from the letter that's in the watering hole itself. So, and then um, it, was, it was a performance that I did a participant. So let's go on. I just, before we move on, I just wanted to say something, and it has to do with, with travel and encounters and records and mementos. That, that these are works, at least for me, seem to kind of combine this kind of, not, not just your history, but, 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 but your memories of, 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 of people and places and, and things. And, and, and they very much, I mean, to me, they're so quintessentially, you know, about a person like you who has been in the world and around the world. And I would definitely, I would agree. And I think it's also, but always rubbing up against, if you will, both a, um, a, an aesthetic history, but also w w whether that's in the, the piece on the right with the DAD, um, which is about um, the Dharma Rest. There's an image of, let's say, you know, um, um, Basquiat from the, from the Blue Ribbon series. You know, so I think there's a way in which it is highly personal from second material, but it's always, in a way of uh, rubbing up or a certain frisian of will or certain art history. I and mean, I think it's also a sort of a political context. I think it's always that tension for me between the highly personal subjective, but also always applying pressure to its content in a way trying to, uh, yeah, to, to, to situate that, so. You know, I've been thinking about dad, um, untitled dad a lot in the context of a course I just taught on uh, Alabama. And we've been looking at the walls of, of, of impoverished Black people uh, in the past and how they used to take newspaper and old magazines like Life Magazine and, and uh, the, the you know, newspaper. And they would plaster the wall with all of these bits and pieces of paper. And what you'd end up with are these amazing collages. Mm. Uh, and, and, and I want to believe that there's like a trajectory from, from that kind of, um, imagery of both utility and, and beauty to, to what we're seeing in your works, which are a combination of, of again, memory and, and a kind of an aesthetic imprimatur. And also about momentum mori as well, in a certain sense, if you think about the piece on the left, it, as I mentioned, it's honor to, of my late father, but also 
on the piece from the right, the watering hole, in, in terms of trying to flesh out, to give, to embody, let's say, a lot of these young men who had been killed, in some cases boys, and in actuality to try and somehow to, to, to imagine, let's say, um, not so much a life, but to imagine, let's say, um, an historical record, if you mean, it's similar to the way in which, if you think about the, um, the Michael Stewart self-portrait, the fact that, um, the fact that when that work first came out, um, the, the portrait of, you know, say Michael Stewart, the fact that having people, having it in the New York Times and people using artwork as a way to evoke let's say, the passing of one and to somehow to bring a certain political agency to that. And I'm curious in terms of how work can do that. So it is without question personal, but it also, I would say it's, it's a, I mean, it's, it's also a certain type of formal rupture with me in terms of how do we deal with notions of like, of like grieving and loss and how do we also deal with the idea of value? For example, how do we, what does it mean to assign value let's say where often that they value is uh, somehow um, extracted from the very essence of who they are. So I think, I do believe in the regenerative and the recuperative possibility of art to do that. Or if you think about the work on the left in terms of like the difficult, you know, relationship I might've had with my father. And I remember talking with a um, um, friend, um, Kwame, um, the great philosopher, um, Kwame Appiah. Anthony Appiah was talking precisely um, over lunch at, um, and saying that, um, that my biological father, who was second generation petition, you know, handsome, beautiful man, um, um, in a lot of ways, you know, not being able to, uh, quote unquote, or struggled, let's say, with the confines of, let's say, what it meant to be an American, you know, a Caribbean American second generation, first to go to college, and then, but in a way that through his leaving, that he almost gave us, he gave us Africa through his absence, if you will. So maybe we should use that to segue to somehow um, the African fabrics if you take it from, you know, there. So let, let, let's, um, let's move on, um, please. So um, did you want to um, take us into this, um, Rick, or how should we do this? Well, yeah, I mean, th this work is really fascinating for me. Uh, as we talked about earlier, I've been to Senegal, I've been to South Africa, I've been to Nigeria, uh, and I've been to Morocco, but I've not been to Ghana. But I've always considered Ghana kind of fabric cent central. <laughs> it's the place where, where one thinks about kente, where one thinks about you know, all the incredible weavers you know, who live both south and north. And then there's all this great printed fabric, which these works that you've been working on for the past couple of years are really, you know, I mean, they, they form a kind of an anchor for, um, for, for, for these pieces. So, um, and again, they're like the, the, on the other side of the continent. So we have Tanzania earlier in your life, and then we have Ghana um, uh, more recently. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so it was, it was, I mean, these works, be, as, it, as it says here, it was started in 2017, but I was living in Ghana. Um, I went there, I was invited by Yaron Yarko, who was the economist, a uh, um, Ghanaian economist, um, and he was um, the former vice provost of NYU, and he invited me to go and help develop a program. As you know, um, Awam Ampa, um, uh, Manche Diawara, and Deb, you know, Deb Willis, had said it was important, let's say, for NYU to have a campus on the continent, given that there was campuses in London, Paris, you know, Tel Aviv, you know, et cetera. So I came in, I think, a year after the program was founded to help um, with a colleague, Nancy Barton, to found the art program. Then I went um, for a semester and I fell in love with the people, um, the culture, and someone. And I was there um, um, for seven straight years. I don't know what, I don't know, except for one year, I was working my tenure back here, but I took an extra year there in Ghana. And um, you know, I was struck, you know, by several things. By, um, as you know, any given Friday or Saturday, there are um, scores and scores, if not hundreds, of people that are out on the streams, uh, on the street, and that is the days where funerals take place. And I um, so. That's one thing, and I remember um, I went to to the Ashanti Palace in um, Kumasi 
with my partner at the time, you know, Prince. And on vacation, um, we, we met his uncle. And, um, and then a year later, his uncle died. And I um, accompanied him to um, travel by Jeep, you know, the work should take a couple of, a couple of hours, took five, six hours to get up, you know, to Kumasi, which as you know, the Kumasi is a seat of the Ashanti empire, you know, unlike the coastal Franti people, which had more contact, let's say, with foreigners, if you will, the Ashanti are like a deep, rich, you know, ancient culture. And I was just struck by the, the ceremonial and the deep rich folklore, I mean, the history. And to be, um, I mean, there was something that, I wouldn't say I was possessed, but there was something I was struck by just the, the power of um, the funerary procession, not, you know, in fact, in doing research on funerary culture, that um, it's been um, well cited that African American funerary culture is more, has more in common with Ashanti funerary culture than it does with fellow Americans in terms of like within the funerary procession, there is the idea of Thanksgiving, there is the idea of, let's say, ancestral worship, the fact that it's not just about grieving, the fact that there is a process that one the clearly grieving does take place, but there's also the point where one is also celebrating life and continuity. So um, how are we doing for time, Claudia? So just to have a time check, because I'm long-winded, as you can see. We're doing okay. We have around 15 minutes before we can open it up to questions. Okay, great. So um, thank you. So this first piece, right, so I required the fabric through um, the, um, the CEO of also, most of the fabric from Asukambo um, Textiles. I also uh, approaches um, several um, Kente fabrics, and the last one we'll see is um, an Eroy Kente. It's been stated that although um, that um, most people um, um, associate Kente with the Ashanti, that as you know, the Ashanti were um, a warrior class, and the fact that they might have actually had their influence on um, um, Kente from the Eroy people. So if you ask the area, that's what they would say. So I would just want to just put it out there. So, um, so what you're looking at, I mean, did you want to unpack it? But basically, I was interested, particularly after the warden hole had finding its home, after the 10 years of making the blow-ups in terms of the um, ephemeral quality tactile element of that, almost fragile, I was interested in what would it mean to we turn to the idea of rephotographing, let's say, as a process that goes back to the waterhole. And in this sense, I was interested in, these are dice of prints that are abutted. Um, and um, the, um, you know, the images are sourced, um, not from the extra promo, some are from the extra promo archive, but they are uh, from a repository of images, I mean, that I, I always shoot. It's like breathing for me. The fact that these are works, these are images that I have, you know, gathered either, you know, I've shot directly or I've gathered from newspaper prints, et cetera. So well, um, I just wanted to say what I like about these is that you can deal with the fabric and the very specific individuals that you photograph. And at the same time, one can experience these as um, as I wouldn't call them abstractions. But, but clearly meditations uh, in chroma, uh, contemplations in, in light and dark, yes. um, imagery versus, or figural imagery versus design. I love that, yeah. So should we go to the next one? So, um, I mean, this is, this is curious because this is a montage, you know, technically speaking, but there is a, a collage element, if you will. Um, notice in the right panel, the left side of the right panel, Claudia, perhaps you can use the cursor, you see there's actually um, the David Hammond's flag that, um, <laughs> that has been made into an acetate that's actually uh, pasted directly, glued directly onto the, the, the aluminum itself. So I was interested in, you know, signifying there, particularly with the, the American flag, the, um, the, with Martin Luther King, um, Dr. Martin Luther King, and on, on the left panel. Um, I also love the play with, um, well, 2D versus depth. In mm -hmm. other words, you know, the, the fabric kind of is emphatically two-dimensional. And then you've done these photographs of photographs 
But then when we start to go deeper, what we're ending up doing is that we're walking into these spaces that you've created within these um, four, you know, kind of sides. And, um, and I'm looking at Polaroids that have been photographed. Of course, the great uh, Benin ahead of, of the Queen Mother that you have photographed. Uh, and of course, the David Hammonds. So there's, there's all sorts of interesting kind of detours that are not just visual detours, but, but kind of cultural diasporic detours. Yeah, I love that because I think often, um, and I, I think this has been sort of one of my, um, my curi I guess curiosities or, or maybe one of the, my intellectual interests or just aesthetic in terms of like, I mean, leaving traces. I'm not sure, and I think that, that has always been within the work, you know, and I think, um, I think it speaks to futurity in terms of what might be possible in terms of how one leaves traces in terms of like the idea of excavation, how one is the layering and the constantly, you know, veiling, but also layering. And, 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 and that's something that um, um, uh, I'm, de I'm deeply interested in. Should we go on? Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love, I, I, I love. I'm chuckling at um, Andy and Liz. Okay. <laughs> Andy, Liz, and also, I also like the woman, you know, um, the, lower, the lower right and left, because I think in a way that, I mean, before, you know, gender performance with a capital GP, you know, came into existence, I'm interested in those early, and even the side that you talked about, way women, in terms of like the manifestation of the fluidity of identities, the fact that before, you know, gender performance became like, you know, the au courant, the fact that what was, I'm interested in the vestiges of those elements within the, 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 the diaspora culture, if you will. And I'm interested in how to, the, the idea of, um, the, 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 the citational without, yeah, so that's something that's curious to me. Um, the, the, the pottery itself is actually um, from, um, one of my, I, mean, I brought a lot of object, objects, if you will, while I was, while I was traveling, but this is my, my most prized. It was just a, 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 a pot that the local, you know, um, woman would grate, you know, pepper for tilapia, you know. Um, um, you, you haven't had fish until you go into um, and had tilap tilapia with pepper, you know, in um, you know in Ghana. But anyway, so I brought these two pepper pots back, and they were on my you know, my prized possessions, you know, on uh, you know, you know. If I forget the chop or kahindi, it was it was these pots, you know, that you know because it was something that. Um, it just brought back to me the memory of, you know, spending time with Prince or being with Elizabeth, who was a house. I mean, there was, there was a certain energy that, I mean, you know, in terms of traveling, the fact that how um, that the, the local markets, you know, just seeing women in the market and how they possess energy, how the, the self-possession, you know, um, and I remember... Um, when I um, went to my first, uh, the, the funeral I mentioned, um, Prince's uncle, and how the, his aunties indicated to him that I knew, and I'm not sure whether they kept, maybe, maybe it meant growing up, maybe it was growing up in the AME church, knowing how to pay my respect, you know, to the Elvis, you know, the Elvis woman and going down to the neck, but there was something about that. Intuitively, I knew that in my body, and they were, they were able to read those signs. And so how does it relate to this pot? So I'm just saying this is a pot that I brought back that wound up breaking in my apartment in Washington Square, and I was going to throw it away, and my dear friend um, Tommy suggested that I keep it. So, well, yeah. Lyle, I know that you know Richard Wright's Black Power, oh, and that's one of, of my favorite books. Oh, that well, it's it's quite controversial, you know. I mean, the Americans love it, but the Ghanaian elite, um, uh, they they have arms. Um, I love that book. In fact, it was that book and Side Dia's Side Dia's book, Lose Your Mother, as well as. Um, the Black Sun, I believe it's called, it was another travel, I forgot the guy's name. Esu, um, he, was a, he was a former director of the ICA. His brother's a- Esu, um, e e Esu, um, yeah, I know the guy, E-E, e. in terms the of initials. E about Ghana, for example, in terms, yeah. in terms of, I guess to give you a certain sense, my way, how I process, because I think these works are definitely looking at, let's say, 
um, reading um, Richard Rice, as you mentioned, seminal 57, Travel Off the Gone, um, and how that moment, that almost phenomenal moment when he sees two men, he misreads the two men engaging. Oh, he was saying, is this somehow manifestation of um, homosexuality in Ghana? And actually, it, I also love the fact that it is almost a veil because where multiple things are possible. The fact that it was his Americanness after reading something that may be much more fluid, if you will. So there was that, but also Saidi's Hartman. But, but, but go on, please. Go ahead. I was just going to say, he sees that moment where these women are dancing. And he says, where did I see this dancing before? And then he says, oh, I saw it on the south side of Chicago. And so at, even in 1957, he's making this kind of diasporic link that Robert mm -hmm. Ferris Thompson explores Absolutely. a decade later in terms of these linkages, these kind of un, um, I mean, unspoken but, but, but corporeal linkages mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the continent and Black America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. So Next slide, we... please. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. I mean, it's just so surreal to be here. I just want to just say I appreciate all 59 of us. <laughs> I mean, almost to hold, you know, um, the space. And I, you know, I was going to say I wanted to um, also dedicate our being together to um, our dear friend, you know, David Driscoll and um, Maurice Berg and also um, Sandico Decolo and just thinking about because, I mean, you know, the fact that I haven't seen the show, and the, I mean, there's something that, I mean, it's surreal, the fact that the show is up you know, and we're here, but we're all together. And I, I'm just thinking about um, the power of the imagination to sort of like to create space, you know, and, but it is about, you know, intimacy and, and connecting as we are, you know, right here. So um, we're in the shadows. So um, this is the install. So did you wanna, um, should we go to the next one? It's curious because I think um, the photographs don't, um, these do, but some the single images don't give you the sense of depth and the of these unique assemblages. And what you're not seeing, which the photograph does not capture, is the the patina. There is um, a spatial depth within the flattening of the object itself, and that is radically different from the um, the almost material depth, if you will, of let's say the blow up. And I was interesting, again, what does it mean to apply pressure, I mean, formally to almost flatten at the same time to have a spatial depth within the works itself, within the, the imagery. So um, did you want to say something or should we go to the next I, one? I, I want to get to this one at some point. Which one? The one that we're looking at, the, the close up <laughs> of it, if we can, because I love uh -huh. it so much. I mean, I love these two. Let's go to that and come back if we have time. Should yeah, we do that? yeah. Okay. So let's start. I mean, yeah, for me, well, let's I mean, okay, this is one of the few that, that where you actually use the woven fabric from Ghana. That well, there's this is actually vintage kente that I acquired from a Ghanaian um, antique dealer um, who goes by the name I, um, I lost man, um, but he was, I mean, um, a friend, he would also, you know, I have several of, I brought Kente for several of the people in the call who were with us tonight, but this is something that um, I also, he, he was an antique dealer, I and mean, he was, he's brilliant, you know, and is also super savvy, and he um, walked me through the process of applying materials. So let's, let's unpack this, because I think, I think it's curious. Well, I'll let you start, please. Well, first of all, I'm moved by your respect for the kente uh, in this piece. Not that, I mean, you're respectful with all of the pieces that you've done with fabric. I mean, they really are, um, are, are anchors. But with this one, it's really clear that you're letting, you know, the, the, the strips, which are so central to their aesthetic, be themselves. Mm. And, and, and it's, it's just so obvious that, 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 that the phot photography is in conversation um, in deep conversation with, you know, these strips, with their interruptions, with their call and response, mm -hmm. with, their, with their colors, with their contrasts, uh, and, 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 um, and, and, and that's kind of what I'm responding to initially. Yeah, and I appreciate that, I really, because I think that was um, super important to me, that having, um, Holding on to the materials, I should just say that um, I gave away a lot of materials materials um, um, when I first returned in 2013 
1314, but these materials have um, um, remained in a, you know, in a trunk, you know, um, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. They did make a, a initial appearance in my um, 2007 um, Venice Biennale, you know, install um, with, with, under, with Rob Store. Um, but um, similarly, as you know, that often, I mean, just the, the level of high regard how people regard fabrics. For example, um, a lot of, you know, women um, would actually buy fabrics and store them away for their young daughter when she gets married. So in a way, it's almost like having an addition, if you will. So in a way that the, the, they gained energy for me, you know, you know, as they were at time when, when, when by. So this is, this particular one is from 80 years ago, but I acquired it probably in 2013 or before that actually. And, um, and I don't know, I felt like, you know, I, I needed for the, for the content we should unpack if we like, um, I needed I, I, that it, it found its it found its proper home, but I needed I needed I needed time. Um, um, the work, I mean, this particular subject matter. You know, I think that clearly, I'm I, I'm drawn to the, the idea of the repetition. There's almost an exquisite corpse, you know, quality. Let's say to the the suturing of the images, you know, et cetera. Um, there are. Um, I should just say there's a, the reference, a direct reference to a uh, form, of, form of Mark making the, the watering hole, then to the dad piece. So there is a momentum more going on on multiple levels, not just in terms of, let's say, within the watering hole piece from 96, the dad piece from 2018, but it's also retrospectively looking at um, the, um, um, the death or, you know, of um, the, you know, renowned, you know, um, um, theorist, you know, um, Lyndon Barrett, of author of the book, Blackness and Value, you know, there's also a reference to um, someone who was killed at the, one of the young men who was killed at Pulse Club. So there is all that content that I should just need to say that unlike maybe the almost graphic, um, almost charged, of the warden hole that it's on a low simmer here, but it's there. And the fact that, um, um, I mean, this, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. So I, I think I would just say that, um, yeah, just also thinking about, um, particularly um, in this historical period where we are today, um, I'm actually say in terms of the, the almost explosion of um, how the, um, the, the centering of the black diaspora culture in terms of the art world, you know, in terms of you know, literary, literary world, et cetera. And there, I'm interested and I have always interested in how do we go back and somehow to name and to give voice for those who might not have made it through, if you will. And so um, in a way, it's um, sort of as a mentor more to, for those, you know, like say who have, you know, um, um, who have have left in a way, and um, you know Lyndon Barrett. You know he died a violent death, and often you know it's not within this. I should just say, the work for me is almost um, not so much an afterthought because it is about the work, but it's also about this is a fraction of a, a wider, let's say, collage. This is a but. Within that collage, there's also um, a photograph of Don Belton, you know, the author of Speak My Name, you know, that he did a book on um, black, mas black men and masculinity, people ranging from Trey Ellis to Robin Kelly to, you know, Skip Gates, Randall Keaton, et cetera. And the fact that um, similarly, the way in which the warden hold certain men, certain, you know, when people pass on or kill, et cetera, we often, don't I feel like we don't fully honor because of they might have the way they might have passed, if you will. So I want to give voice, you know, to in a way, in a way, probably in a way, in, in the tradition of like the funerary. What does it mean to somehow honor those have gone on? So not that somehow to only see within that particular lens. I mean to interrupt. Uh, Sorry, and, Lyle. We have around three, four minutes left. So I think the. The next piece, if we move on to the next one, should be the, okay, uh, the last one. Richard, I think Richard wants to unpack this. I was just going to add that thank you for that, that exegesis, because now I know who the oracles are. 
um, and 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 you've really kind of laid that out so so poetically with the 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 the, the faces, the, the 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 fragments, and 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 this kind of collective um, homage. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, did you want to look at another? Yeah, let's go back. Let's go back up for for at least one more. Yes, please. Maybe there. Okay. Um, do you want to start? Well, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm seeing <laughs> I'm seeing family pictures here. Yes. Uh, um, yes. I, um, I, I love the doubling. I love um, just the, the multiplicity of I guess self represent you know of portraits of the self you know, ranging from you know takes from the New York Times you know cover story to myself as taken by my, my grandfather, Albert Sidney Johnson, who, you know, as you know, was a huge, huge, huge influence on my brother and I in terms of his, um, not only his essence, but also him being a exemplary in the matter of, let's say, Frederick Douglass, um, relate, you know, um, um, his uh, sense of the, the importance of photography to representation, also to legacy, et cetera. Um, that's my brother, Thomas, and I with my, my father, my late father, Thomas um, Allen Harris, and taken by my, my grandfather. Um, I love the repetition in this piece. Yes. I love the fact that, that um, once is not enough. <laughs> and so in multiple spots, we get, we get, we get like double vision, you know? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, um, we, um, and, and the head, but also, I mean, obviously the, the double red head, but also within the cloudy, if you could point to the image below my, my father and us, right there, it's uh, the, the doubling. There's two of them. One is um, the, the handcuff, so the handcuff that was in Venice, Biennale, and to the right of that is um, two letters that I received, you know, from prisoners, you know, quite poignant, poignant beautiful letters that are printed on silk. So there is the idea of the repetition and doubling and reiterativeness. Um, and you and Thomas as well, you know, and well, your dad. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I also like, I mean, curious now that I, um, um, there, there's like a um, interesting nod to, um, a wink, if you will, to the UNIA flag, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, just thinking how that is um, somewhat abstracted or refracted, if you will, you know, and, um, and that is in contradistinction to, let's say, the way the centrality of, let's say, that UNIA flag in the, um, in the, the good life world. And I love the op art quality of that yeah. fabric. It's almost kind of making me dizzy <laughs> looking at it. Uh, but it, but it fits into this idea of doubling and succession and 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 patterning. Mm -hmm. So should we go back in? Um... Yeah. Let's go. Let's go up some more. Yeah. Let's see what we've got. I think we're going to go to some questions. We received some questions from our audience. And Kristen, our gallery assistant, is going to read a few of them. So when I ask, when I uh, announce your question, you're more than welcome to um, ask it yourself. Um, I don't want to, um, you know, read your question if you want to ask it. So I'll start with Kinshasa. Do you do you want to ask that yourself, or I'm happy to read it if if, if you wouldn't want to speak. Okay, so I said. These works are astounding. Uh, I think of you as one of the premier artists who have claimed the black body, especially the black male body, as a site of agency in a society where black people are viewed otherwise. For example, as hunted figures deserving of violence. I'm gonna add this thing I didn't say. Thank you for mentioning Michael Stewart. Thank you. Um, that seems to me to carry an enormous power and also an authority. Uh, this seems more vivid now than ever. Does this resonate with you at all? The rest of my thing is a fangirl comment, which you can look at later. But does that resonate for you at all? Does it, does it have any? Um... Are you asking me or Richard? Or... I'm asking you first and Richard too. <laughs> Both of you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Without, without question, I think, you know, um, um, yeah, I would, I would say, with, I mean, I think that's been one of the, the hallmarks of my work. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I would say so. Um, 
Yeah, and I think um, among, um, you know, among others, you know, have been doing that work over the years. I think it's curious with these works right here is that particularly, um, Kinshasa, with the, particularly um, with the, um, the, the exposure, if you will, of, let's say, works that have become, let's say, iconic right now, whether that's the work of the Black Male show or, let's say, um, the handcuff. I, I, I'm interested, I'm equally interested in the complexities of um, how one could deal with the layering that the the montage and the collage and montage aspects offer to almost to excavate some deeper meanings, et cetera. You know, I think in a way that um, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm interested in the, the play. I think, um, 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm interested in both. I'm definitely interested in both. I mean, how, um, yeah, I, th- I think that's important, so. I, I would just add that, um, um, King Sasha, that um, I agree with you that, that, that Lyle, and in particular in these works, um, I'm, the word that I keep on coming back to is kind of, is respect. And it's respect for history, respect for those who have gone on before us, respect for, for Africa, a, mm. a place that, that, that is the, the fount of civilization mm-hmm. and yet gets such a bad rap. Yes. And, and Lyle, you know, um, in these works really, really kind of gives the continent, gives Ghana, gives the aesthetics of the continent um, their due yes. uh, in conversation with, um, with, with, with a son of the new world. Yes. Um, someone who has traveled the world over and experienced um, all sorts of marvelous and, and, and fascinating experiences and brings all that to bear you know, in, in these works uh, as, as testimony, you know, to, um, to our resilience. Yes, really. And also to that, I appreciate that. And also to the, the complexity of Afrofusion. I remember when, um, during my first year that I was there and Jay-Z and Beyonce came and um, my friend, my dear friend, the artist, theorist, Sanama Kujato's brother, Maulio Kujato, he dressed all of the, the, the MPs as well as the president in his clothing. I have several, his, um, several of his pieces of clothing. And going to Jay-Z's concert, you saw people from the diaspora, from everywhere, I mean, you know, in Ghana. So I think in a way, I'm also trying to deal with the complexity and the, the, the cosmopolitan and the contradictory quality of that. And I think there is... <laughs> Yes. The way in which, because there is the idea, of the romantic, if you will, that we are always romantic, we're romanticizing ourselves and the others. When I'm interested in those fluid spaces, I think in a way that um, of idea and um, Richard, Richard Wright, you know, uh, half a century before, saw that, and, and, and yes. I think I'm, I'm arguing for a more complex, you know, yes. elevatory complex. Yes. Yes, wonderful. Thank you both. Thank you. And then we just have one more question from the chat um, from Jan, who said, uh, what is the author and the title of the book in which the connections between Ghana and Chicago were drawn? The book is called Black Power, and it was written by Richard Wright. Uh, um, Thank you, Lyle, 1957. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating book because Wright um, is documenting the transition from the Gold Coast to Ghana. And he's in conversation with, with, with Kwame, Kwame Nkrumah. He's, he's, he's traveling all over the, 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 the country. Um, he's, I mean, Richard Wright is Richard Wright. So, so there's a little bit of, of, of uh, skepticis, skepticism there, but, but I think he realizes that this is a part of, of, of his legacy that, that, that he has to acknowledge. And uh, I think it's a really important book that, that, that traces um, the discovery of the continent um, by, by one of the most important thinkers of the 20th century. All right, thanks. Um, thanks to everyone who asked a question in the chat. And then we have a few more general questions. Um, I wanna ask Lyle how 
the current situation with the COVID-19 pandemic, how this has impacted your work or your, uh, um, who, who, your future outlook of, of the series? Um, who's, who's asking that question? Just a social media question, general. Oh. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a rich time. I think it's a deeply rich time. I think, you know, I was um, in a writing class today and um, one of the prompts was how do we hold grief and wonder within the same space? And I think it's a time, you know, to, to do that. You know, these are extraordinary times we're living in, not just with COVID, but also in terms of the, um, the political situation, in terms of um, um, it's, we've experienced in the last few months, the, the just think about, I was reading the, um, a book by the author um, of, um, one of one of the founders of Black, um, um, Black Lives Matter, um, and just thinking about, and it's a, I highly recommend the book. I'm forgetting the title now, but to go from her experience of living in LA, you know, and to um, be under police surveillance, to witness her brother dying, to be under, I mean, these like kids to witness that level of trauma and policing. And the fact, the goal from that young girl to have Black Lives Matter create, create the international movement, I mean, it's quite extraordinary. So I think this is um, a time where to breathe and also to be thinking about possibility. You know, it's been a very productive period for me um, in terms of my work. Um, um, I'm in the process now of, I, there's a, I think we should, I'm, I'm, there's another show that I'm in, um, in, um, in uh, Miami that's concurrently going on as Dave Castillo at the ICA. Um, it's, uh, and I'm super happy for this um, latest iteration of the Ectochrome Archive install that Jim Marano curated. Um, and it's the first sh show um, in, in dialogue with the um, Bob Gober seminal piece from 94. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to a friend yesterday, just thinking about, can we go back, please? This image right here, um, which on the far left is a portrait of Michael Stu, um, Michael Richards, who was killed, as you know, and um, in, uh, Michael Richards was killed in 9-11. Um, and the far right in the center is vaginal, Va um, vaginal Davis. And the far right is Marlon Riggs from Black Popular Culture Conference. And I am thinking about um, that these images are all from, let's say, the well, 90, the far right is 90, from let's say 91 to let's say, um, what was that? 90, early 90s, 91, 92. And how these vestiges of, of history and culture and the fact that what does it mean that number one of these works were actually taken. But then again, the fact that um, the expansiveness of our culture, where these works are challenging to have them go from here to Brazil, to Sweden, you know, to Ghana, et cetera. What is it about the global currency of these emerging identities over the last many decades that are now central to the discourse on not only American culture, but global culture. For me, that is, I think, where we are. And I think this respite, you know, I mean, clearly, I think a lot of ways that I will be curious to see what work comes out um, as I reflect on the deep, you know, um, traumatic, you know, loss, you know, that communities, you know, have experienced. And then how do we, how, I mean, I, I, how do we process that grief? And how do we also hold a space, let's say, for, for celebration? So. It's something that, um, um, how do we hold that? So I think um, that, that's, what I'm, um, that's what, I'm, what I'm interested in. Thank you so much, Lyle. Thank you so much, Dr. Powell. It's been a really amazing, engaged conversation and it's been a wonderful treat to learn more about this. such a diverse body of work um, as the Shadow Work Series. So I wanted to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, and yes, thank you so, again so much for, for taking the time. Well, thank you so much, Rick. It was a real honor to be here with you. And, and thank you so much for um, joining me. Thank you so much. This was a delight.
Well, thanks everyone. Thanks, Claudia and Kristen, and um, wishing everyone a, um, a blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lyle. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.